We've walked on the moon. We've sent robotic explorers to every planet in our solar system, from the scorching heat of Mercury to the icy plains of Pluto. Five remarkable spacecraft, the Voyagers, the Pioneers, are even coasting through interstellar space, ghosts carrying messages from humanity. So, the next logical step seems obvious. Pack our bags, build a starship, and visit other stars. Why haven't we? Why does Proxima Centauri, our nearest stellar neighbor, remain untouched? The simple, brutal answer isn't a lack of imagination. It's physics. Cold, hard, unforgiving physics. Let's talk scale. Proxima Centauri is 4.24 light years away. That sounds manageable until you convert it. It's about 40 trillion kilometers or 25 trillion miles. That's nearly 300,000 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Imagine stacking nearly 100 million trips to the Moon end to end. That's the gap we need to cross. Our farthest probe, Voyager 1, launched in 1977. After almost half a century of travel, it's moving at about 17 kilometers per second. It has crossed the heliopause, the boundary of the sun's influence, but it hasn't even traveled one light day yet. A light day is how far light travels in 24 hours. Voyager needs decades for that. At its current speed, Voyager 1 would take approximately 70,000 to 80,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri. Not exactly a weekend trip. And that's just the closest star. The Milky Way galaxy is 100,000 light years across. The scale isn't just large, it's almost incomprehensible relative to our current capabilities. Okay, so we need to go faster. Much faster. The fastest object humans have ever built is the Parker Solar Probe, which uses gravitational assists from Venus and the Sun to reach incredible speeds. It's projected to hit peaks of around 700,000 kilometers per hour during its closest approaches to the Sun. That's fast enough to circle Earth in about 3.5 minutes. Sounds impressive, right? But it's still only about 0.065% of the speed of light. Even if we could maintain that record-breaking speed constantly towards Proxima Centauri, which Parker Solar Probe cannot, the journey would still take around 6,500 to 7,000 years. And here's the fundamental physics problem. Accelerating mass requires energy. Accelerating to significant fractions of light speed requires staggering amounts of energy. Thanks to Einstein's E equals mc squared, energy and mass are related, and the kinetic energy needed increases exponentially with velocity. To double your speed, you need four times the energy. To reach, say, 10% of light speed, the energy needed for a reasonably sized spacecraft isn't just large. It's comparable to the entire current annual energy consumption of the human race, possibly more, depending on the ship's mass. We simply cannot generate or handle that kind of energy for propulsion right now. So, how could we generate that speed? Let's look at our options. Chemical rockets, like those used by NASA and SpaceX. They provide high thrust but are incredibly inefficient for long journeys. The vast majority of their mass is fuel and they burn through it quickly. They follow the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation, meaning to get even small increases in final speed, you need exponentially more fuel. Useless for interstellar speeds. Ion engines, used on probes like Dawn and Bepi Colombo. They are extremely fuel efficient, using electric fields to accelerate ions. But they produce incredibly low thrust, like the pressure of a piece of paper resting on your hand. They can build up speed over months or years within the solar system. But reaching interstellar speeds would take centuries, maybe millennia. Nuclear thermal, electric. Concepts exist, but involve using nuclear reactors to heat propellant or generate electricity for stronger ion drives. More powerful, but still nowhere near enough for fast interstellar travel. Plus, they come with shielding and safety challenges. Fusion drives, the dream of sci-fi. 
If we could harness nuclear fusion, fusing light atoms to release energy in a controlled, compact, and efficient way, it could offer much better performance. But we haven't achieved sustained, net energy positive fusion on Earth yet, let alone miniaturized it for a spacecraft. Challenges include ignition, containment, fuel sourcing, like helium-3, and massive waste heat radiation. Antimatter. Theoretically, the most potent energy source, 100% mass-to-energy conversion. But we can only produce minuscule amounts, nanograms, at enormous cost, and storing it safely is a monumental, perhaps impossible, engineering challenge. Laser sails. Breakthrough Starshot. This project aims to push tiny, gram-sized nanocraft with powerful ground-based lasers to maybe 20% of light speed. It's perhaps our most plausible near-term concept for sending something to another star within a human lifetime, a 20-plus year journey. But these are uncrewed wafer sats carrying minimal sensors with no way to slow down, vulnerable to dust impacts, and relying on laser infrastructure we haven't built. Bottom line, we have no existing or near-term propulsion system capable of sending large spacecraft, let alone humans, to another star system within a practical time frame. Even if we could reach high speeds, interstellar space isn't empty. It's filled with tenuous gas, dust particles, and occasional micrometeoroids. At everyday speeds, these are negligible. But when you're traveling at 10% or 20% the speed of light, 30,000 to 60,000 kilometers per second. Hitting even a speck of dust releases enormous kinetic energy, potentially equivalent to kilograms of TNT. A collision with a particle the size of a grain of sand could vaporize or cripple a probe. A larger impact would be catastrophic. This necessitates heavy shielding for any interstellar craft, especially one moving fast. But adding mass for shielding means you need even more energy to accelerate it, creating a vicious cycle. Designing effective shielding without making the spacecraft impractically massive is another huge hurdle. Okay, imagine we solved energy, propulsion, and shielding. We launch a ship at 20% light speed towards Proxima Centauri. It arrives 20-something years later. Now what? It screams through the target system in a matter of hours or days. To actually stop and study the system or enter orbit around a planet, the spacecraft needs to decelerate. Deceleration requires just as much energy and propellant as acceleration, unless you use highly speculative methods. You'd essentially need to carry a second propulsion system's worth of fuel just to slow down. This dramatically increases the initial mass and energy requirements making the problem exponentially harder again. Breakthrough Starshot's nanocraft, for example, have no planned deceleration mechanism. They are designed for a one-way flyby. Getting there is only half the battle. Stopping is just as hard. Now let's add humans to the equation. Even relatively short interstellar journeys at optimistic speeds would take decades, likely centuries. And keeping people alive and healthy for that long introduces a whole new set of challenges. Radiation. Outside the protective bubble of Earth's magnetosphere and atmosphere, space is flooded with radiation. Solar particles and high-energy galactic cosmic rays, GCRs. Shielding helps, but GCRs are notoriously difficult to block completely without massive amounts of mass. Long-term exposure significantly increases cancer risks damages the central nervous system, and could cause cognitive decline. Biology. Zero gravity or microgravity leads to muscle atrophy, bone density loss, cardiovascular changes and vision problems. Artificial gravity via rotation could help but adds immense engineering complexity and mass. Life support. Maintaining breathable air, clean water, food and temperature control for potentially centuries in a closed system is an unprecedented engineering challenge far beyond the ISS. Reliability needs to be near perfect. Psychology. Confining a small group of people to a tiny environment for decades or centuries, completely isolated from Earth, poses immense psychological risks. 
stress, conflict, depression. Sci-fi solutions like suspended animation, cryosleep, are purely theoretical. We have no idea how to safely freeze and reanimate humans without massive cellular damage. Generation ships, giant vessels housing communities for centuries, face immense sociological challenges, maintaining purpose, social stability, genetic diversity, and technological knowledge across generations. Basically, human bodies and minds are poorly adapted for the extreme duration and harsh environment of interstellar travel. Let's assume we overcome all of that. A probe, or even a crewed ship, arrives at Proxima Centauri. They want to send back data, pictures, a simple hello. At light speed, that signal takes 4.24 years just to reach Earth. If Earth controllers wanted to ask a question and get a reply, they'd have to wait 8.5 years. Real-time conversation is impossible. Remote piloting is impossible. Any autonomous system would need incredible AI to function independently for years or decades without input. Furthermore, sending a detectable signal across trillions of kilometers requires significant power and precise aiming. Another challenge for a ship that just endured a multi-decade or multi-century journey. What about cheating physics? Warp drives, wormholes, bending space-time? These concepts emerge from Einstein's general relativity. They aren't completely pulled from thin air. The Alcubierre warp drive concept, for instance, suggests expanding space-time behind a ship and contracting it in front, allowing faster-than-light travel without locally breaking the speed of light. Wormholes could theoretically connect distant points like cosmic shortcuts. Sounds great, but there's a catch. A very big catch. These ideas almost universally require exotic matter, hypothetical stuff with negative mass or negative energy density. We have never observed such matter. We have no idea if it can exist, let alone how to create or manipulate it in the vast quantities needed. Quantum mechanics also casts doubt on the stability and traversability of such structures. While theoretically interesting, these remain firmly in the realm of speculation not engineering blueprints. There's currently zero practical path towards building them. So, let's recap. Interstellar travel faces insurmountable hurdles in distance, speed, energy, propulsion technology, interstellar hazards, deceleration, human biology, communication delays, and relies on fantasy physics to bypass them. It's not just one problem, but a whole chain of interlocking, show-stopping challenges. This isn't pessimism. It's realism based on our current understanding of science and technology. While we should never say never, breakthroughs can happen, crewed missions to other solar systems are simply not feasible within this century, and perhaps not for many centuries to come, if ever. Sending small, robotic probes on one-way trips, like Starshot hopes to do, might be achievable. Continuing to study exoplanets with powerful telescopes like JWST will teach us vastly more about other worlds. But for humanity itself? Our destiny, for the foreseeable future, lies right here, within the bounds of our own solar system. Understanding these limits isn't defeatist. It allows us to focus our efforts on exploring and potentially utilizing the vast resources and destinations available closer to home. Until we fundamentally rewrite the laws of physics or achieve energy and engineering breakthroughs far beyond anything conceived today, we are firmly anchored in our cosmic neighborhood. This was just one question. There are many more. Follow AstroVault for real space science.